Hello world or future Mel. I have to have my phone camera on too so that I know how cute I look because like this video is something. <laughs> so I've had to come on here <sighs> I've had to come on here and just go through this kind of I'm a trip, I know. We're just in a place right now where it's like it's like a crossroads and it just also happens to be the new year. It's new year time. And uh I, this is this is crazy. So my whole life, my entire life, I've never been a nail painter. I've never because I've been a nail biter my whole life since kindergarten this girl is num 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 just anx anxiously attached to some kind of just thing to do with my mouth <laughs> I just need something to do with my mouth okay so lots of self soothing lots of that so anyway something has happened this year i'm like this is killing me something happened and has been happening these past years <clears throat> and that is the spiritual awakening of melanie smith and others of course um and it's been absolutely amazing and wonderful and very soul enlightening, very validating as a person. I learned a lot of things about myself and validated a lot of things about who I am to myself and how I would like to express that going forward and express that moving forward in the world. And I've just come to the realization that I am, I'm a vessel. I'm a vessel for messages for, from the universe and I'm so beyond grateful and thankful to be part of it. I'm so grateful to have this wisdom, this light, this motivation that I'm able to put forth into the world just by speaking freely and naturally. Um, nothing in what I'm putting forth is strenuous it all flows it's all part of me it's all part of who who i'm becoming who i'm designing and i f i spend a very just good amount of days designing who i'm becoming like in a just huge way lots of lots of planning lots of designing lots of okay well <clears throat> What does this type of person do? And I've been trying to really itemize and get to the bottom of actually how long it takes to truly embody something that you want to put forth. Because I I wrote a program, I wrote a book, which is just like so amazing. My younger self is dead, like in the best way. She's so stoked about a book that says by Melanie Smith. Like that's her dream. <coughs> dry <clears throat> she's also dying at like all of this aesthetic and the fact that we're here with painted nails it was on christmas and i was like what and actually i painted that on christmas too and i was like i want to paint my nails and i painted a couple. I just painted like the key nails. I did like 
two nails here and like three nails on here and then I was like I want them all and then now here I am a nail polish chick <laughs> insane so I mean not insane but like just just while you know I've done a lot of time capsule today <clears throat> and so that's what has led me to putting on makeup setting up a video and getting going on it I as I was saying I am a vessel to share energy to share light to share word to share 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 to inform I'm the manifester I am the initiator and creator of a lot of things a lot of beautiful things and amazing wonderful things and I accept this journey to inform and I accept this journey to put forth my my skills that are inherent that are inherently me that are who I am how I am and that will help a lot of people for sure and just it's been just quite the journey of studying people, embodying types of characteristics that I want to put forth into the world, thinking, just kind of designing, like like I was saying, like just designing my whole life this whole time. And you know, sometimes you get things wrong, sometimes things are a little harsh, and uh, maybe that's not the type of person you want to embody, so you gotta take time to kind of deconstruct out of that, and that's fine. And I'm in a place right now where it's just something that's beautiful. I feel like I'm living through a soul child, like having birthed a soul child. This, this, this art that I'm putting out, and and the events and melamine and what's to come with melamine. I just cannot even. I just, I just let it all flow. I just give it creative freedom to flow, and see where it goes. And I'm just beyond excited about it guys like here's the thing I didn't do anything wild um, this is how my place is normally like that's a little bit it's my makeup and like that's me not cleaning at this point um, I just love how aesthetic my home is it's so beautiful like after after my super long relationship that I spent the almost, I mean, just a huge part of my soul trying to save. <laughs> After that ended, I was like, I have so much freedom to decorate this place however I want. I am, I'm, I'm just this free soul out here. And I'd never been through that before. And I'd never experienced that before. In my childhood, we were very just, we were very secluded. We were very protected. We were very much, um, just very much uh, sheltered, if you will, and very disciplined. And so I didn't get to live much or explore much and, or ever really be, be expressive on my own. I found that when I did get time to be on my own, like in the middle school and high school years, I really just dipped a toe in self-expression. I could have done a lot more stuff because I was alone a lot. And so um, in terms of... <laughs> in terms of, like I'm just thinking now like I was in that house all alone as my dad was working all the time I could have decorated a room in a way that I wanted to but it never occurred to me to ask or or be like you know what I'm here all the time I want to decorate this room but everything was just so cold and so like oh this can't be done oh we're not supposed to do that so don't even ask and like a lot of life became don't ask and just assume okay just assume that this person doesn't want you to do this because you want it and so that that right there held me back from a lot of things I would be like I want this and I'd be like oh they'd probably think that you want it and they probably want it themselves and you know blah 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 there's some reason like immediately talking myself out of it when in reality you never know what someone else is thinking you never know what someone anything you don't know 
<laughs> you just don't know. So don't talk yourself out of things if you can help it. So onward to say, I went to college off on my own. Now that was on my own. I was a whole ass college student in San Francisco and I had a roommate and then I had her for a semester and then she moved out <clears throat> the second semester. So I got that dorm room to myself for one semester. I got to live alone. And then I'd say for the next year and a half, I did live alone. But when I lived in Vegas, I was in um, weekly hotel, like weekly stays, because uh, I didn't want to like sign a lease and like live there. It was very was very determined and apparent that I was only going to be there for a short amount of time and that's for my event planning school and conference management school and after that it's dipping out to OC okay baby and that's exactly what the plan had been I was in this relationship and the relationship took over my life it took over my entire life and during the time I felt that it was the most beautiful thing the most amazing thing in life I mean love is 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 the most amazing thing there's nothing nothing that can replace just such a love love filled experience like you, when you are in love, you really just, you want to hold on to it forever because no matter what kind of love you got as a child, it doesn't matter that love as an as a com companion. You have this person in front of you um, who sees you as you are in this form now. Like you don't have just some 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 artificial way. This person volunteered and said, "I love you." And when you feel that connection, it's absolutely beautiful. Something that I didn't understand for a super, super long time is that that connection is not exclusive to just one love. And that connection is not just for a partner. That connection is in a best friend. That connection is in a sister. That connection is in a cat. <laughs> love you, mommy. And what I did was I really tried to harness and protect the love that was within me because I thought it was only meant for him and I would feel guilty anytime I, I, I wouldn't even tell anybody that I love them except Trisha I love her so much and my friends my super close friends but um I got weird about letting people close to me I don't which I've always been weird about anyway but um I don't know, I just wanted to be this exclusive person for this person. And this person did not even, he didn't even ask for it, didn't require it, didn't need it, but he did enjoy it, okay? And obviously I noticed it was working, and so I was like, okay, well, I don't need anyone anyway, oh well. <laughs> and so I became this amazing, like, homemaker, okay? Cooking and cleaning i would make him three meals a day i was cleaning uh, what needed to be cleaned i was working running a business and just just a machine just doing my thing at a time i was prepping for bodybuilding shows i was doing body i did seven bodybuilding shows um while taking care of this person while taking care of myself while just just go 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 so today I was actually watching old YouTube videos of myself and wow I just reach back to her and I hug her and I love her and I cherish her and I love her fire and her motivation and her love and her energy and it was just amazing very much a dome I mean you can see the dome over her head I mean she's being very open very honest very just just out there just but protected protected Mel and that's okay I, I love her for it. That was a great era. I accomplished a lot and I did a lot and I was a fucking machine. It's so funny. There was this guy that was at the gym and he used to call me Mella Machine. And it took me years to... 
I'm like, ha ha, yeah, that's great, that's great. And then I started kind of describing myself a little more. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a machine. I'm a straight up machine. Like, plug me in and I'm ready. <laughs> let's go, let's go. So that was the time capsule today, kind of going back to those times and just kind of explaining my relationship. But so here's where the milestone happened. Here's where the big thing the the big change in Melanie happened because if you watch a video of me right now and you watch one of me back in 2015-16 there we, we're sisters and <laughs> we love each other uh just definitely not 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 the same person which is wonderful right which is absolutely wonderful this is where I am right now is a person that I've kind of judged for a while, judged the type of person that this is for a while. Um, I allowed a lot of opinions within my relationship hinder the growth of who I was to become. Uh, there were comments of, um, just comments that just weren't very positive for the person who is the overly positive, and that's just who I am. I'm overly positive as fuck. I meet someone in the bathroom and I'm like, so what are your goals for this year? <laughs> no, I don't. But what I will do is this. Someone will say, I can't wait to go to Florida. Oh, well, when do you plan on going? Oh, I don't know. Well, you can plan it when you have time off when's your next time off blah 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 blah. like i'll just like go down the go down the route of finding it out i don't want to get like deep into a into an explanation but a lot of my relationship held me back of the enlightened soul that i was wanting to embody and wanted to become there was a time there was a crossover where i was studying fitness doing fitness going all in and then it became deep okay because with my clients i would always tell them look this is about mindset it's always about mindset mella mindset okay we can work out for this one hour but your mindset is going to be everything because when you leave this gym where is your mind are you looking to go out to eat now are you going to say oh i don't feel like cooking and i'm just going to do this are you going to go off your goals i mean that's really what it is are you dedicated to your goals or are you not and i was that trainer that was just just stickler about that <laughs> about about just pushing those goals but um wow i mean that was a just great distraction during that time Anyway, rewind or fast forward. Um, it's just been a whole adventure. And so in the, I guess in the, I want to say during the thick of it, I mean, it was the thick of it. If I had been competing at least for a few more shows, I very well could have gone pro if I really put my mind to it and really, you know, like who knows, <laughs> like who knows where I could have gone. I'm not going to say, oh yeah, for sure. I definitely would have, but I'm not going to say that I'm not. Okay. Um, and it's just so funny. If you watch those videos back then, you know that this girl goes after what she wants. And so this relationship Mm, I am just so hungry. This relationship definitely ended up creating a different me, we'll say. So I got back from Pittsburgh, North Americans, national show, and my life would change for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, what we were doing was just autopilot. And I was competing, and we were doing what we were doing. And um, obviously there had been problems leading up to it. Like huge, huge, like mental health issues. Very, very hard stuff. Very, very hard stuff. And 
that girl, 26, 25, 26 year old, had no idea how to handle or understand somebody with such um such a position i did not have the experience to to take on the severity of depression and darkness in a sense and i said i can't take this on i am a I am a big giant beam of light. Do you see me? I wake up every day stoked for the world. I don't know. I don't know how I thought what I thought, but I did think that I could save this darkness. I tried to do everything I could, but it was never for me. <clears throat> it was never meant for me to heal, but it 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 brought so much out of me so much um it was absolutely amazing absolutely amazing looking back god amazing as in how how it full circle came to me learning about my childhood trauma learning about my mother issues my father issues my self issues my authority issues my ego really training my ego having the call to action to look within myself and train my ego because i had a big one because i came out of a childhood that was suppressed i was suppressed i was told who i was how i was and i rebelled okay and i rebelled in in such a small way when you look at when you look at how big of a light i am and how how big of just ness that i bring to this earth and so as I learn myself and as I become more me, I am just so filled with, with gratitude of every lesson, every fight, every failure, every, every loss, because it all becomes me. And in every, every form of myself, I praise her and I say just, wow, wow. <laughs> I'm watching, like people in my life, they're, they're very impressed with me. And I say, I'm watching just like you. I'm, I, I'm heavily impressed by my impulses, by my actions, by what the universe brings to me and what I decide to like follow and go through. It becomes beautiful art and it becomes just this powerfulness and and so we're kind of at a place right now where it's like, look, lean into it, give yourself to the world, give your soul to the world. You are a vessel of light. You are a vessel of love. You are a vessel of, of action. You are a vessel of empowerment and enlightenment and ascension to higher self. You are the embodiment of love. You are the embodiment of, of power. You are the embodiment of beauty. <sighs> let them see. Let the world see. And it's just so beautiful because it just ties back to my my essence of 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 holding in that person just so that this other person can have all of me. And when I finally retreated back. I took a step back and I observed my life from an outside lens in, in a constructive way, in a non-rose-colored glasses way. 2020 took my rose-colored glasses the fuck off, okay? So we're talking about 2016 where my life changed. 2020 is when it was like, look, we've been sending you messages. We've been ending things for you, and you keep going, and we're done. And then the exact rug was like, the rug from the universe was like, Shh. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, okay. And started smoking weed, and I was like, everything is fine. Everything is okay. I don't need that, but, you know, everything's fine. And... So everything became fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, so, so I'll give like the quick notes and then bounce on out of here because your girl does have to eat and I know that I have so much more to share but I just don't know what this video is or what it was but I guess I, I'm glad that I was able to talk and everything because I did just graze right over that that fall <laughs> back in 2016 but um <clears throat> yeah I'm like, that thing happened, but I'm beyond grateful. Dell, let's not forget that I'm beyond grateful. Okay, let's rewind. 2016, I came back from North Americans. Um, it's a national qualifying show in Pittsburgh. First time ever being on the East Coast. It was so cool. And one of my clients worked for the airline, or she had a lot of ticket, or a lot of um, miles or something. And she flies a lot, so she upgraded my ticket to first class. And it was my first time flying first class, and it was the coolest thing ever, and it was so bomb, and just greatness, just greatness. Uh, thanks, Sophia. Love you. And so, very great trip. Wonderful trip. I met some girls off of Instagram. We went out to eat. We uh, competed, obviously, on stage. Oh, gosh. I want to say that I got like 12th in that show. That's a complete guess because I came home and dissociated completely from all of it. <laughs> Let me tell you why. So I came home, flew home first class. I saw a little flashback picture. It was like salmon and quinoa and vegetables and wine. It was absolutely wonderful after competing in a show. It was the last show of the year. I was so stoked. I was doing vlogs right up until that until that show right up until it and when I came back I didn't post what happened at the show I didn't post anything that I vlogged at the show I just let that footage just sit and I actually have it on my computer um that was something that was a therapy thing a few months ago watching those videos Ooh. so anyway I came home and all my boyfriend's stuff where it was packed and this is this would be a six-year relationship at this point six-year relationship fucking newsflash fucking f fast forward uh spoiler alert we broke up at 11 years okay <laughs> 11 years five years is is what I started giving and drudging my soul to this relationship in order to make it work. I came home from Pittsburgh and all of his stuff was packed. All of it. He was gone. He was gone. He picked me up from the airport. He was late. I was annoyed. And I was like, okay, cool. He dropped me off at home. We get home and all of his stuff is not in the house. And it's very clean. It's like clean as fuck, which he was always good at doing whenever I traveled or did anything. He would always clean. It was beautiful. He, he was such a great boyfriend. I love him. I still love him very much and, and I enjoy his experience. He, he was just great. Uh, but lots of bad, lots of great. <laughs> we love a balance. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, I got home, all this stuff was gone, and it was very detrimental to me. It was very heartbreaking. Or the, he was my soul. He was, like, a really big deal to me. But it's just, like, competing and doing all that stuff had me laser-focused on competing and fitness and nutrition and all of that. I was really hyper-focused on that. I don't know if you guys can tell. <laughs> uh, from Instagram and YouTube, it really takes over your life. Like you really do end up doing it just all the time. And I was flowing with it. I loved it. It was so fun. Uh, <laughs> I ended up being a brand ambassador. A brand ambassador. What was I? A brand ambassador? I guess you could say that, yeah, brand ambassador for Evagen Nutrition. And that was the coolest thing ever for me. Like, that was a huge accomplishment. I follow them on Instagram. I use all of their products. I tagged Hani um, in my post all the time. And I'm like, you're going to know me. And then I went on stage at NorCal, took first place. And then he messaged me and was like, would you like to join us? And I was like, me? 
oh, this is destined. Absolutely. I will be joining you. And so I joined and, and, you know, I joined the whole supplement thing, use my code, this and this, and it was just a wonderful ride, a wonderful experience. Um, but during that time I was very focused on that and my relationship definitely took a back seat. And this is not a communicative relationship whatsoever. If there's a problem, it festers for like a year plus. Um, if there's a problem and I bring it up, it's dead silence. Silent treatment is the kind of thing that would happen to me. And um, which ignited something, which ignited my inner child wound because I just dauntingly hate being ignored. I hate it. I don't like being ignored. And I really like attention from my partner. And um, yeah, so things just started down, it started going downhill. We ended up getting back together like a month later and then just doing our thing for the next five years. You know, the little uh, roller coaster, trying to make this work, blah, 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 blah. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but what I will tell you, is that I grew at an accelerated rate. Uh, hold a PhD now for, just kidding, I don't hold a PhD, but for mental health. I learned a lot about patience. I learned a lot about, a lot about the self and about how I put my inference on someone else's existence, which creates pressure and so in that, I dimmed myself. I dimmed my light because I said, it's too much pressure. It's too much pressure for this person. It's, it's, it's over daunting. And I let myself believe that that was the case for everybody. Because I only love this one person and I only give this person one love. That must be how I love. And so when I go out into the world and I speak to these people, they think that I'm overbearing. They think that I overpower. They think that I'm obsessed with myself and that I'm too happy all the time and that no one cares about my motivation self-help talk when, when they're feeling down. And um, no one wants to hear the truth all the time. And just, just all these little, these statements that are actually, that became um, kind of action points for me to say, you know, noted. <laughs> I'm not going to try to motivate people like that. I'm not going to um, put my inference of their life onto them, which is like, yeah. But also, I have so much wisdom to share, and as long as we do it in a responsible and safe way, I think it's okay. Who I am inherently and freely is okay. You are okay, Melanie. So it was like, it was like the, um, the opinion of one person which if you just saw me in the outside world, you never would have, you just, you, anyone other than someone that I'm deeply in love with doesn't stand a single chance in swaying me. I'm unmovable. I know who I am. I stand in my power and always have ever since I was little. I specifically remember a time, I think it was in elementary school, middle, it was in middle school. And these girls, they were trying to, I mean, we'd label it as bullying. They tried to bully me and like make fun of my clothes and my brother. And I just remember sitting there and I'm just like, and they didn't like that I didn't react and they didn't like that I didn't get angry. But the truth was is that I wasn't angry. <laughs> like inherently and as a human ever since I was little, no outside like no one besides my parents can hold a thumb under me or, or teachers i was very much like authority i always wanted to impress authority and but but never in life was i like oh my god this person thinks this of me because that's always been just like a suggestional thing like oh that's your opinion congrats on on thoughts you get to have thoughts i have thoughts as well and i have truth as well and i'm living in my truth what about you how's your truth going apparently 
not so well if you're focused on mine. <laughs> and then I'd be smiling and they hated it. They hated it. And I, I, I didn't know what it was. But now that I'm an adult and I look back at those times, I'm like, they were very upset that I was just going in my flow, living in my flow, being me and being melody and free. And they, and I just wouldn't falter from that. And I remember talking to, I hate calling him my ex. He's just a really, really close soul to me. Uh, but I remember talking to him and he, and I'm like, people are so kind of shocked by me and then they're they're trying to wait they're it seems like they're trying to wait for me to kind of drop the act and he was like yeah and it's definitely a realization when they find out that this isn't an act <laughs> and that was a really funny like mirror moment because i'm like he gets it he gets it <laughs> Bless his journey and his healing, the lengths and how far he has come in, and his healing is just so commendable and so absolutely amazing. And controller Melanie wanted to be around for it all, but there's just no way. There's no way that him and I could have kept going in the same path and the same passageway of life against the universe's wishes and made anything healthy out of that so we make the best of luck i mean we just wish the best upon each other and just hope that that we rise and we will rise because of the detachment that was able to happen oh my gosh so when we finally did separate it became um it was very cordial is very just holding each other just mm. it's literally oh it's only been like two months and I'm not able to like instantly cry um, but yeah lessons upon lessons 11 years So it's been hard getting myself back. I will say that it's been hard getting myself back, kind of getting to the understanding because the first part is to learn and to actually be aware, oh, I have a self to get back. Like, oops, I slipped and I need to get back. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> okay, as stupid and simple as it sounds, it's true. I've fallen and I gotta get back up. It's so imperative. And so, but the thing is, if you talk to me on a daily basis, you you just you just wouldn't know. <laughs> you would not know what I've been through. <laughs> but I'm so grateful for for everything and that these lessons, these things I've been through, that are like, oh my god, that these are my lessons and not like much more detrimental things so oh my god so using that power and that energy and that gratitude just now that i express i have no excuse i need to get out into the world i need to express my creativity my art my soul my messages i am a vessel and i intend to just enjoy this journey enjoy this ride because it's time okay it is time <sighs> i feel so happy to have gotten all of that out too and to have looked at all of what melanie was putting out back in her 26 years um powerful truly powerful <laughs> Really powerful. Can we just note that the reason that I'm able to polish my nails, guys, <laughs> is because I'm not anxious anymore. I don't have to, I'm not overthinking, I'm not biting my nails. 
I'm not biting my nails. That is why. This is appreciation. This is huge. Uh, literally since kindergarten, this girl overthinking about life, trying to control everything, trying to know the outcome, what's going to happen if I do this, trying to think of how I'm appearing somewhere and making sure that I'm appearing okay so that the gods in the universe can know that I was a good girl while I was here as a human being and I was the best human being and I didn't live that much because I was safe and I made sure that I was safe and made sure that my my skin is nice and smooth and ready for for my deathbed when I end up going and it's just one of those things of you gotta live you're not here to to have the best looking body when you get in that coffin okay <laughs> not saying go like burr like break a bunch of bones and stuff but I am saying like get out there get out there you can't just Oh, I'm not gonna go hiking. What if I slip and fall and blah blah blah? Oh, that doesn't sound. You know, obviously, like use discretion and what you, where you go and what you do. But the key is to trust yourself. The key is to trust your innate actions that are going to lead you to your next adventure. Do you trust that you are gonna follow the right instincts from the universe that will guide you to where you're going? Can you trust that? Can you? Okay. <sighs> Exhale. Because it's all going to be okay. And that trust is going to guide you exactly where you're going. So hold on to that trust. Hmm. That's what I get to live embodied, just embodiment of self-love, self-trust, self-honor every day. Ugh. My life is so abundant and so beautiful and my, my cloud up here that I sit on that I've been grateful and blessed enough to be able to, to enjoy and create and design, it's, it's wonderful up here. It's my comfort zone. But we are no longer doing comfort zones, are we? No, we are not. And all of this light, all of this love that is within me, it is all mine. It's all yours, too. It's all yours. I'm just going to pump it all out into the universe, and it's going to be the most beautiful thing ever. And it is completely tied. We, I can't believe I went this whole time without talking about astrology. A absolutely imperative aspect of this transformation, okay? Astrology just started, I want to say two years ago. It's been two years of astrology. But... Let's just say that the stars are aligned for greatness for this one over here. I'm definitely <laughs> going to bounce out of here, but I I don't know where this is going, but I hope to find the highest light somewhere in this, in this message, in this 44 minutes of this. And... Um, this was great for closure for me and kind of an intro for me as well into the, the, the new realm that I'm building, the more public life. <laughs> we'll have to speak on that another time, of course, but the public life definitely uh, has me a little wary for sure. But there have been cycles and cycles of this lesson, and I'm ready to accept it. All right. I'm ready to accept it tonight.